Good evening. Welcome to the January 24th, 2024 Abington Finance Committee meeting. Uh, we are continuing our uh, series of meetings, talking to department heads, preparing for the FY25 budget. Uh, tonight we have three departments coming to talk to us. We have our town clerk, Leanne Adams. I'm very happy to see her here. We have our veterans agent, Adam Gunn, who's here. And we have our town accountant, who is <coughs> almost always with us, but is with <laughs> us in a slightly different capacity tonight. So. Andrew Nocon, for those who are not familiar. <laughs> so, um, we want to let Leanne get in and get out. So, uh, she is first up for bids. How do you guys do it? I um, so, why don't you start with uh, where the town clerk department is at, and we'll go into the budget from there. You can go with whatever you want to start. Leon, we were asking everyone for like uh, um, highlights. Yep. Okay. Highlights, what if, you know? Highlights, goals. Right, so I did achievements and goals. Yep. Okay. Um, in the past year, we purchased two new early voting ballot boxes that we're going to use here at the town hall. Um, in the past, we have used the census box, but now we have something that's a little more secure when people come up to early vote. We purchased new voting stations that we're going to use here for the town hall for early voting as well as the polling location. Um, they allow four voters to be at each booth and we ordered five of those. Uh, working with South Shore Vote Tech to assist us in creating or repairing the census drop-off boxes that we have, the ones that are at 2Ds, there's one out front. Of those. We um, sorry, backing up, no? four, four voters at one booth? Yes. It's, it's round and there's four stations. Okay. State of the art. Nice. State of the art. <laughs> uh, we've attended three court conferences. I am hopefully attending another one next week. And we're continuing our project with CPA and co file preservation for the um, records that we have in the state. Our goals um, basically to make it through the year um, with all the elections and the Postcards. A lot of and, elections this year. Um, today, we received, I don't know, maybe, maybe 100 and a half postcards came in. And as each one comes in, we time stamp it, then they go in order and all that. So it probably took Barbara and I about 20 minutes just to time stamp them. And that's just standing there like um, So that's what we're trying to get through. Um, and just the elections and the town. Leanne, where will, where will these census drop-off boxes be once they're repaired, created? Uh, they're already out there, and we're going to be bringing them back in soon. There's one in front of Town Hall, there's one in True Keys, and we still haven't received the one back yet to put in the banks. We just didn't put one in the um, Abington Savings this year. We're still getting a lot back, and we're trying to wrap up that project before we actually... We don't have the ballots yet, but we're trying to wrap up the project of census so that we don't have... When will early voting start? When they give us the ballots, yeah, mm -hmm. waiting on them. And there'll be early vote, voting for both the primary and the for everything. general? Everything. Yeah. Okay. The um, state and federal elections were required to do Saturdays. But we don't do that for the town. Okay. Anything else before we dig in to the budget? Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions before we move in? All right. We'll start with your extremely complicated uh, salaries right. table. Uh, okay. Ready? Um, One forty-six, five forty-six, and that is for um, the town clerk and the assistant. Book binding, we kept the same at 900. Uh, data processing, 550, 5,500, sorry. And, and in training stayed the same. 
uh, the postage, I know that it's blank on there, but we're figuring it's probably going to be about 5000 or probably more. Each ballot that we send out is about a dollar. So mm -hmm. There's many of them that are going to go Telephone, a little bit. Printing stayed the same. Office supplies, a thousand stayed the same. Ballot same. Views and fees the same. The salary and wages for temporary, that obviously went up for the early voting to 50000 so much money. Repairs and, and that's based on number of elections. Yes. Right? And because we staff up here during the day for the early voting, that's, you know, we're here at 8.30 to 4.30, and there's at least four people that are in here for the day. In addition to Barbara and I downstairs and the helper downstairs. How long does the early voting go on for? Too long. That's what I was just going to ask. Too long. Um, it's a February 24th to March 1st. And that's like a state thing? Yes. It's very, very expensive. And I'm sure the state covers it. They <laughs> cover a small amount. Yeah. Uh, repairs and maintenance stay the same, 15. Data processing did go up a little bit before the um, encoding of the machines because there's so many elections, that's what that's based on. Elections postage, I guess it could be with either the town clerk or that because we combine it. Printing is 4,700. <coughs> Office supplies, 2,000. That went up uh, mostly because we have to buy hundreds and hundreds of labels because when the ballots go out, we put the labels on them. There's probably about four between the return address label and then the inside. Four for each ballot. Uh, election and town meeting did not go up. That's 5,500. And that's it. That's a lot of money, but. Yeah. But look at those revenues. I didn't print that. <laughs> It doesn't seem as impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. hmm? Yeah, that was just 23, so I would think that 24, 25 would be, it looks the same. We did raise the cost of marriage intentions um, from 40 to 50. Is I didn't print out the total for that. And you're on the numbers on there. Is FY23 a partial number? It's whatever was in data a couple weeks ago, so it should be mostly complete. Because birth, death, and marriage licenses looks very consistent for the three years before 23, mm -hmm. and then significantly percentage wise. Mm -hmm. I can, down? I can see if there's. Um, Dog and kennel changes. seems consistent. Intentions of marriage seems consistent. And that's going to go up because we're trying to tell that was more. But yeah. the first step in marriage just, just depends but how many trend? people. Did, okay. it, did it really dip that much? A little bit, no. yeah. What is the first line there? Persons listed books. Persons listed, those are the ones that uh, all the census information goes into. Nosy the, book. The nosy right. book, resident listing. We don't really make a lot. It's pretty even because we just charge people what we have to pay the cost of printing the book. Okay. And that one's not, the state requires us to do that. People don't buy them as much as they used to. Maybe we should advertise more. <laughs> Any other advice. questions for Leanne? Looks like you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Leanne. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Always good to have you. Thank you. Um, Thank I'll you. leave these for you guys, too, if you want to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, Adam Dunn. Adam, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Good to see you.
Now, when will these pretty Andrew? This afternoon. Okay, so I'm just going to thank you. He's back out. I came in and made a bunch of changes today. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Andrew. I apologize. Start off with the mission and yep. okay. mission um, achievements goals. Okay. The primary mission, uh, instead of reading off there, is kind of to uh, is to support and assist veterans and eligible dependents with assistance and provide local, federal, state resources. Um, that's the large list of things on the screen there. Anything to do with veterans, we uh, help them with. Uh, we're in homes on a weekly basis uh, for those that have difficulty leaving. Um, thanks to Wayne, we can do anything remotely uh, as we help veterans and widows in any way uh, they need to provide resources. I just want to um, clarify, too, because I've had a couple of people ask me. We, you are only work for the town of Abington. Yes. Yes. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that we Prior have. Prior to my arrival uh, in October of 2020, it was a part-time. Right, Abington, Abington and Whitman. And, yeah. But we now have our own full-time veterans agent that yeah. they can reach at the... Mm -hmm. Town Hall. And the program is significantly more successful. Yeah. Because yes, of that. indeed. Yeah, we've gone through several iterations of the program during my time on the committee, from separate to combined to separate, and definitely is in uh, the best shape that it's been in since I've been here. Thank you, man. So. My primary job function are VA claims along with Chapter 115 clients. Uh, last year, the office did approximately 78 VA claims last year. Uh, some claims like hearing loss and tinnitus can take about an hour. Other claims require multiple appointments, uh, going through hours of medical records and military records, uh, trying to find the service connection for the disability that they're applying for. Uh, we receive walk-ins and phone calls daily. Um, most of my time is spent um, they're tracking down answers to random phone calls that people call it for or we're doing VA claims. Uh, 2023, let's see, the, now I'm going into achievement, achievements by the way, sorry I didn't clarify that. Uh, in 2023 the state report showed the VA paid out $424,422.86 per month from the VA into the hands of Abington residents. Uh, frankly, I think that number should be much higher. I think, um, I think you misspoke on that. The number on here says 524,000. 422. You said 424. You misspoke or you misprinted? <laughs> I sure misspoke. Thank you for the correction, Matt. Yep. Uh, the total was $524,422.86. Uh, coming in from the VA into Abington uh, in October of 2023. Per month? Per month. Yes. So I do have kind of a breakdown. Uh, I'm sorry, I should have passed these out. One, two, three. Great, thank you. You can you. kind of see the breakdown of the veteran compensation. Um, approximately 246 veterans in Abington. I uh, received VA disability compensation. That amounts to most of the income coming in. Um, veteran pensions for those that are served in a certain wartime period that have really low income. DIC is for widows whose veterans were killed of service connected disabilities. And death pension is uh, a widow who makes really low income and this spouse served in a wartime period. So that can change significantly as I see clients, obviously, all the time. Uh, as people pass away and widows could receive a death benefit, this number fluctuates. But uh, we have been significantly increasing a little bit every year, for sure. So is this only four retired veterans in Abington, or only four went through you for assistance? All veterans in Abington. The, the pension one, the veteran pension. So that's a retired veteran is that correct so the veteran pension so that is actually a stipend for a pension it's a uh, certain amount for very low income veterans uh, that receive I forget what the federal poverty level is but they receive very little and yeah. if you served in a wartime period 
the VA actually gives you a little extra every month for the rest of your life because you served. Yeah. And, uh, that makes it great country. Uh, one of the largest disconnects we have in the department is reaching veterans that were born in 1960 and on. Uh, the retired population um, we have a great relationship with. I feel like we have a pretty good communication through the senior center um, that we're reaching that, but we, we're not seeing as much of the younger generation of veterans as we could be or should be. Chapter 115 clients, under Mass General Law, Chapter 115, we reimburse all medical expenses to low-income veterans and widows. 75% of that is reimbursed back to the town. Martha, who we have a part-time assistant in the office, she's there on Monday and Tuesday, and she's done by Wednesday. That is her full-time job, uh, assisting Chapter 115 clients. Um, there's not enough time in the day for her to complete that as it is. Um, I get a pass down from her every Wednesday. We often rely on Lori and accounting to support our efforts. Um, the Veterans Advisory Council in July of 23, we first met with the Veterans Advisory Council. Um, blessed to have an incredible team that I bring all the ideas um, and projects to, and it's a great team that mentors and advises and uh, helps me with all the projects. Uh, one of the first things did, they did was the Abington Saves Fund. Um, we requested $50,000 of the ARPA funding and we were approved for the grant last year. Uh, it's been going well. We've uh, given away about $5,000 and we have three applications um, currently in routing right now for grants up to $1,400. Well, last year we also created the Veteran Tax Workoff Program, uh, which has been fantastic right now. We have five volunteers right now that are volunteering on a weekly basis. Um, most of them are coming into the office a couple times a week or once a week um, and helping out using the tax workout program to help us with projects and things we just don't have the time and energy for. Uh, and it's been going really well and we're bringing to the town meeting a proxy option. So we have, for instance, a volunteer who doesn't live in Abington and she comes once a week. So we want to be able to use those hours to apply that tax abatement back to a disabled veteran who can't volunteer and leave their home. That's a great uh, idea. So we're excited about that. And the more we dive into the proxy option, the more kind of sparks people's interest to volunteer and get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the best council on aging there is. Um, we get got really active and involved with a lot of their activities and it pays off every time uh, reaching new clients. Uh, we can probably get at least a phone call a week for a referral from the senior center, uh, as well as the senior informer. We put information out every month. Uh, we love partnering with local businesses who support veterans. Uh, for the veterans lot here, Colvin Landscape has done uh, the veteran lot cleanup for free at no cost. He's given us additional uh, just yard cleanups to help out with veterans and widows twice a year. Um, we've obviously had the Veterans Breakfast at Martin's. Uh, it's been going on for two years here in March. Uh, just last year they gave away three, 1,300 meals. Uh, South Shore Votech uh, has been making shadow boxes and they donate those to our office so we can turn those over to widows. Uh, they're creating a brand new table for our volunteer spaces in there. Uh, our veteran celebration, we had 40 vendors, 70 veterans we were able to honor. We had six local businesses. Um, all the food and everything was all donated, um, except for one uh, business, and they donated most of it. Troop, multiple Troop 41 Eagle Scout projects. We love working with the school, getting the students involved. The Honors Projects 351. Uh, we have students uh, doing writing on veterans and publishing those. Um, we partnered with Choochies um, and provided 32 Christmas meal to veterans. Uh, the pickup party, Bubble Place even reached out and offered to deliver those. Um, we have definitely been working with South Shore Veterans Assistance. They put ramps all over Abington, at least on a monthly basis. They're putting free ramps on homes of veterans and widows that need it. Um, they also did it on 
the same weekend as the meals that were delivered. I mean, we have widows that are calling in crying because of the service they're getting from the community and the support they have. Um, it's just incredible. Uh, working with Daughters of the American Revolution to, not to put in there, it sounds terrible, <laughs> not to chip, unattended, away at the veterans' graves um, that needs to be done for our veterans' grave duties. Okay, on to ceremonies. We had Memorial Day ceremony, we had our Tri Town Veterans Day, so there had some mistake, it was the 69th Tri Town Veterans Day parade in Rockland. Uh, this year will be in Abington. The Veterans Day celebration, the Vietnam Remembrance, the Laidler Field, and a Purple Heart Memorial Field ceremony. Um, the goals, and what I need most de desperately is somebody to be in the office for the rest of the week. I mean, having Martha has been great. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and a half a day Wednesday. But when I, my sole job for the most part is to see clients in my office that takes hours when the phone calls are coming in, the walk-ins are coming in, two and a half days a week isn't enough. A lot of my clients are due to referrals in the word of mouth, which is great, um, but there's more of a need out there, um, and I can't help when I don't have the help to serve the community. Um, one of the goals I have in here is for a veteran survey benefit packet uh, that the advisory council is helping with right now. We want to go out and have a survey to find out where the disconnect is with our veteran organizations and our veterans. And we also want to provide the benefits that our community and state and federal government provide and hopefully reach contact with the veterans. Uh, my hesitation on that is feeling the incoming phone call. So I have a challenge doing that as it is right now. Um, so I'm hesitant on reaching out in the community to try to reach this generation that I desperately want to reach, that we're not reaching, but I can't do it because I can't even answer the phone calls and respond in a reasonable amount of time. Do you think there's a, di I'm just, do you think there's a disconnect because um, the younger veterans see it as an older veterans service? Do you know what I mean? There's so many avenues of this. I think certain generations uh, become proud um, you are taught the service to get things done, suck it up, move on, don't ask for help, uh, and that's the mentality that a lot of veterans have. So when they get out, uh, they want to do things on their own, they're tough, they're strong, they don't need it. Maybe they don't even know that services are available. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, within the last 10 years or so, the military has implemented programs in place that require service members to go through a week of training. Um, and now we're getting the veterans, just since I've been here, we're getting veterans from the state of Massachusetts. We're getting their contact information when they get out and they come back to Abington. But there's a humongous gap of veterans we're not able to reach. So I, I would answer that as twofold as a younger veteran, younger. Um, sure. It took me three years to actually go and try to get, or try to look into disability, and I went to Adam for that, um, because I didn't think I was broken. Right? That was the whole mm -hmm. mentality of brain. But second to that too is, um, you know, when I look at Martin's, I've seen that for years. It's all, like the turnout is crazy. But to your point, it's all older veterans. So I, I haven't, I've thought about going, but it's Wednesday at like 10 or something. Mm -hmm. Like I generally have meetings, but I could probably block it out. <laughs> but I'd probably be the youngest one there. So yes. it's like the perception is that yeah, it's like an see older, it like it's a, yeah. older crowd. Um, right. But even I, like I've gone to the VFW in Brockton um, and it's still an older crowd. Like there, there is definitely a gap of like what are we doing like what is my generation of veterans right. doing out there because um, they're not necessarily getting together like uh, like other like the older work. generation yeah. is yeah. absolutely there's so many different and i i do wonder if the current older veterans were getting together the way they are now when they were your age. yeah and i'm guessing mm -hmm. they probably weren't i don't know i think they were right because Times have Probably definitely changed over the years. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you get out, you have kids, you get married. But I think you get jobs, I, I you get feel like up a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. We're busy. more, um, we're busier, or it doesn't. There doesn't seem to be. I remember that you know here in town, the BFW um, being a busier place than. Where is the BFW? <clears throat> 
We, the DFW is, is saying, no longer here. We have the, was by the, the, the American was Legion that post. That was really right. That, yeah. We have the yeah. post to three of them, right? uh, Vietnam the veterans. Was we was by have the BMW who was currently do not have a building. Uh, they they mean, utilize the American Legion right now. Right. Um, one of the things, because of that reason, the veterans breakfast has been great. Uh, we've been uh, doing it for almost two years. I think in March it'll be two years. Um, looking to probably end that. It's been a great two years. It's been a lot of fun. We've reached a lot of veterans, but that is one of the problems we're running into is A, it's one type of age group of veterans, and B, it's become so popular and you have to get there an hour before it opens to get a good seat. Uh, now, when we go, we show up and it's no longer an Abington a veterans breakfast anymore. Everybody's coming from all over every single month. It's packing out and it's been great, but um, it's time to change focus a little bit. Uh, one of the things really excited for that I somehow left off here uh, is one of the um, veterans Advisory Council members, Travis Partington, he's got a uh, veteran podcast he's been doing for about seven years. Uh, absolutely love it. He's going to, he's working with Kevin Tachi back to CAM, and he's going to start uh, creating something called the Veterans Muster, where we do it once a month. TV, social media, we work with um, veterans, highlight veterans, and local businesses that support, and you know, maybe we can get find more ideas along with the veteran survey to try to reach out to a different network of veterans. Is he a Navy guy? No, I'm <coughs> I'm watching him. Is <laughs> he yeah. the guy who did the Grinch thing with Alex? He, one of them. Kevin Dachi did the big, the long clip with Alex and the Grinch hopping down the hallway. Uh, he's helping me. Travis has actually been doing a lot of uh, video we're starting to get online now and um, trying to build our social media presence a little more to reach another generation. Uh, I was unaware that the BFW was using the Legion as um, space. So that may be it. Also, my husband's a veteran and neither one of us would have known that. We didn't even know. They were, uh, yeah. So we've got to find a way. I have to find a way to find out what the communication barrier is. Uh, there's a lot more people out there that this office could be supporting, um, but desperately need more manpower, and we're finding ways to get the word out. Um, I think that's it on my goals. I'd like to move over to uh, the <coughs> members. salaries except for of course the part-time. Um, I would love a permanent full-time. I understand that obviously uh, it becomes more expensive. I'm desperate. I'm uh, willing to have employees high five and figure it out. We just need somebody to be able to answer phones uh, and be available in the office to support the walk-in customer service. Any other questions on salaries? Is that the only way folks reach out to you? Is just a phone call or phone other? call, walk in, or social media has been becoming very popular? Not like text or email or anything. I definitely use that. I have my work and my personal cell phone on one phone, so I constantly text with clients that I'm helping when they have questions or widows or gosh, <laughs> yes, very personal customer service is what we were striving for because we have a small town that we can do that. Yeah. As far as the so, budget. Adam, Adam, just real quick for anyone that may be watching, um, what are sort of the best ways for them to, to reach out to you if they're watching this and not connected with the department? To call. Call, email, uh, come down to the office. Somebody Which is, is at town hall. Right in town hall, right next to the town manager's office. Uh, we're here to support veterans and widows. We love what we do. Um, and we're grateful to be here doing it. So, sorry, continue now. 
Thank you. I don't think my budget uh, changed too much. Um, as far as the care of the veterans lot goes, uh, that increase was $1,000. Uh, one of the things I'd like to start doing is focusing on some of the uh, veterans graves and the veterans lot duties that uh, I have not been focusing on. Uh, for Mass General Law 115 Section 9, every city in town is supposed to have a uh, veterans graves officer and we should be ensuring every grave within the city or town should be suitably kept and cared for. The cost of the care may be not paid by private persons or by the trustees of the cemetery uh, situated. It shall be paid for by the town or city's the appropriate money, therefore. Uh, we have an incredible uh, Daughters of the American Revolution, the DAR, uh, who are passionate about graves and are working with me to try and apply for grants. Um, it would be fabulous to be able to contribute to that, because graves, to have them um, clean, to have them rebuilt, are not cheap. $750 was the last one we just saw that they were able to pay for through fundraising and a grant to make. Um, but we should be helping contribute to that. And it's not a lot, uh, but maybe we could, you know, working together with the DAR, we could chip away at one or two graves per year. Is it only the problem. graves in the actual veterans lot? It's the graves throughout the entire cemetery. So we have now, we have multiple cemeteries, but the primary one is Mount Vernon Cemetery. We have almost 900. We had a volunteer who spent years going through, and we have a list of all the veterans' graves and what they're missing, uh, what they need, and ones that are cracked and broken. Um, just, you know, we need to slowly take action and chip away at that. Something we are looking into using the um, the tax work, veteran tax work op program where we find volunteers that would be interested in learning how to clean, getting out there, taking time to go through all these graves. Uh, and then we have the parade this year. Mm -hmm. So the Veteran Memorial Day, as it was beef back up for the parade again. Okay. 71st annual. Excellent. Questions for Adam? Fantastic. All right. Adam, very much appreciated. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, Thank you for, for your time with us and for your time with the Absolutely. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Stay out of the ICU. <laughs> Thank Nancy tell you I got her? Oh, boy. Thank you. You got to consider your audience when you tell those jokes. Uh, I can't remember the right. I can't tell them here, but I, yeah. Have a great evening. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Thank you. All right. Next up, town accountant. Andrew, do you want to swing around or are you going to stay where you are? I'm good. I'm good. I have wheels. I have to stay here. All right. All right. So, I'm the town accountant. Hello. I think we've met. We yeah. have. Um, I'll just read off the mission statement. I actually rewrote this when I first came to town two years ago, three years ago. It's been a while. <laughs> Your hair was shorter then. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> the mission of the accounting department is to carry out the accounts payable. Oh, you don't get payable. Get in your treasurer's office now. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, in. Oh, right. Thank you. The mission of the accounting department is to carry out the accounts payable and accounting functions of the town with integrity and efficiency and in accordance with all applicable laws and regulations. The, the department provides oversight of town operations in order to identify and eliminate fraud and misuse of resources. Um, some of our achievements for this past year are that we survived another audit. It's mm -hmm. great. Um, we also worked with Plymouth County to um, help pay for our street, uh, street sweeper, um, the veteran saves program that um, Adam was just talking about, as well as the uh, PFAS pilot program that the water department will be implementing. Um, as far as our other ARPA funds go, um, we received funds in two, in, in two portions, one from Plymouth County, the other from the, from the state. Um, 
our allowance from the state was 1.7 million and we have spent that. Um, a lot of the work around town um, that, at the softball field, memorial field, um, a lot of our you know, parks and playgrounds, that has been funded through ARPA. <clears throat> nice. Um, over the past year, we also finished implementing the purchase card program. And we started that last year. And now the um, department has have access to town credit cards. Uh, the town receives cash back on those. And it's all integrated with the accounting system. So once they make a purchase, I'm able to link it into VADAR and have it upload. And we don't have to do a manual process for those transactions. Just because I'm sure that somebody will ask, can you explain some of the purchases that they might be making with the town credit card? Right. So many vendors are online now, and they don't like POs or invoice. They, they won't let us invoice. Mm -hmm. So in the past, the um, department had to use their own credit cards and then put in for reimbursement. Um, so now this helps them make those purchases. And it also benefits the town because we're getting points on it, basically. An example of a purchase. Uh, so, like, if you're getting training from the state, um, they'll have an online portal, and you can use that credit card, the town's credit card, instead of your own, right. to make that purchase directly. And you don't have to go through the, the hoops of putting in a reimbursement, waiting right. for a check, and all of that. Thank you. Um, so then the next question would be, can we find a way to get 2% back on the entire town budget? <laughs> <laughs> By everything with credit card. That would be nice, but <laughs> baby steps. <Yeah. laughs> um, why, right. why can't we do it? I mean, most of the budget is salaries. So. Right. No, no, but we I'm saying like for all, of, card, uh, uh, um, for all the purchases, or is it just not possible? Like, is it possible to put we, it? In? We could do it for a lot of purchases, um, but not really our, you know, we're not going to go out and buy our trucks with the credit card. And we already do get, by buying them through a bid list or doing a procurement, essentially we are getting a discounted rate anyways. We're just not getting it cash back on a credit sure. card. But, but, yeah, I mean, for smaller things, it's, it's very simple. But, again, um, most of our office supplies, which is a, you know, that, that is done through, um, a, you know, a statewide procurement that gives us the best price. And they do bill us. So, yeah, I mean, I suppose we could pay the bill with the credit card, but I don't know that we, it would make much sense. Any point? Mm -hmm. yep. Any points you can get? So Any? Right. That's what I mean. 2% is pretty good. Yeah, 2% is great. Sorry, um, continue. No, no worries. Um, sorry, as other achievements, as I hope you've enjoyed, we continue to um, increment the budget. Um, it's in the cloud now. You have a one note that you can access. It's all live. Uh, there's now revenue data, Ooh. and in the near future, we'll be making more improvements to the process. Um, as far as goals, um, we just hope to continue doing what we're doing. And eventually we'd like to get our, um, our budget to have a GFO, GFOA certification. And that is, um, the GFOA is a, it's a, the Governmental Finance Officers Association. And they give awards out to communities that have, that, that meet their criteria. Um, there's a long list of tasks that we need to get done before that. Um, but it will make the budget a lot more useful for everyone. Um, the audience is very impressed with yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things that you can look forward to seeing, not next year, but in the coming years. Um, Townwide org chart, um, long range financial forecast, performance measures of departmental programs, um, statistical and demographic information about the town, um, a glossary of all the terms and you know, the laws and whatnot, which would be very useful, as well as charts and graphs where they're um, useful. Would that be something that was online? Yeah, we, we could publish it online. Which actually I think that is part of getting the GFOA is that it is accessible. Accessible to everyone. Yeah. Um, if you do go on the accounting website, um, I do have the, all of these spreadsheets posted, so anyone can come look. 
we're just okay. slowly building everything up. Excellent. Um, and lastly, we'll finish out um, spending our ARPA money that we have with Lymouth County. As far as highlights for my budget, um, there's nothing really changing. We're just requesting uh, Amazon Business Prime. Um, the cost of that is $1,300 per year. And so far, year to date, we've spent about eight, uh, $900 in shipping. So just based on shipping alone, we'll pay for it. Can I ask a question? Sure. What stops us now from using it not on business Amazon Prime or whatever it's called? Can you just get Prime? It's, isn't that like a hundred dollars a year? No. So if we, we we can't use an individual account for the town, it has to be the business. It's account. another one of those um, differences between the private sector and um, government. That's like a real thing. Yes. Like, I'm. I'm only saying like who would monitor that? I mean, <laughs> so I mean, Amazon does. Um, it, it's set up so that you know. Every, like people have different logins to the town business account, and it's set up so that it's tax free. Yeah. So. Oh, all right. Well, I guess the tax free part worked out pretty hard. Yeah. Hmm. Another, another advantage of getting Business Prime is that um, there are a lot of unscrupulous third party vendors on Amazon, <laughs> and by Getting Prime, I'm able to direct people to get Prime vendors instead of the weird third-party ones. Mm -hmm. People sure. have run into problems before with returns, and it's yeah, gotten sure. messy. So mm. it would be a huge help. Um, as far as personnel goes, uh, this is all 2% or contractual. Uh, there's no real change here. And. As far as the expense budget goes, I just reallocated it a little bit to better reflect actuals. And there's that request for Amazon Prime. What year of the contract are we in? For the auditors? For, no, for um, the con contractual Clark. clerical. Uh, we're probably in the final. I think it, most everybody is in the, is in the final year. year. Okay. I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> yes. I think we should definitely try and do that. Like have everybody, all departments, all we, you know what? all groups on the same schedule. We so we that they all come up with the same. Well, department. when we were and in Whitman, get, we changed that. Off. Well, that that actually worked out because it seemed like when Whitman we had fire one year, police one year, DPW, and I just, it just seemed like there was always always negotiations, yeah. right? And non stop. Yeah, and it's just so it it almost is better, I guess. But it'll. It does Just better. It takes rough. a lot of time. Yeah. So it's better when they're not very time consuming. consuming. I, I do think, though, with all the work that we did in the last year with the three um, big contracts, I, I think we're in a really good place going forward. So it should go easier. We hope. <laughs> uh, and just to clarify, the auditing and accounting line item in my budget actually pays for the OPEB report. And that's five thousand dollars per year. Um, the outside auditors that we have, um, Powers and Sullivan, that's paid from the uh, town manager's budget. And over the next couple of years, it'll be about fifty thousand a year. For auditing. For for the outside auditors, but the that's outside not in this auditors. budget. The one that's in my budget. Oh, okay. That you'll okay. see. All right. We'll see when the someday. When the town manager we'll presents. Present. Manager <laughs> <That's it. laughs> when. Andrew presents the town manager's budget. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you look at the bottom there, there's also a section for uh, state and county assessments. Uh, when we get cherry sheet money, uh, we also have to pay for some state programs. These are just estimates. I don't know what the actual figures will be, but it will be there soon. <laughs> yeah, I bet we'll see that with the next yeah. week. That was yeah. on the yeah. <laughs> You're not going to find it there. You have to pay for the state program in order to. There's certain programs we do pay our share of, yeah. It's like, a, like a, not a membership fee or something like that, but like a... Um, like mosquito control, yeah. things like that. There's different things that the state does, uh, different programs. And right. 
Uh, Char charter school tuition as well. Yeah. That's a big chunk of it. Sure. Thanks. It's most of it. Which you could still call, right? If it, a resident can still can call and ask to have the ad sprayed yep. if they. Yeah, it's still a thing. Because we pay into that program. Yep. Anything else? That's it. Kind of covers it. Anybody have other mm -hmm. questions for the accountant department? Great. Good. All right. Andrew, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, next up is liaison reports. Have right. Actually, next up technically is discuss and vote on available meeting minutes. And we continue to not have available meeting minutes. <laughs> so we, we have back nothing to vote on. We were she did reach back out. I think you were CC'd on yeah. and said that she would get us the minutes, and but she didn't think she would continue on. We'll reach out again, <coughs> and we'll try and find someone new. Okay. Remind me, who's our? What's that? Who's our secretary? That's Ken. Ken. Oh, yeah. Sarah. Yes. Yeah. So Sarah gets to go through the. Yeah, I'll go through the, the minutes. Go through and make some minutes for yeah. us and get those out. And Paul, out. Paul won't be here to complain. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do think that's difficult. To, you know, for it is. I wonder if we socialize that across the group to make up. That's what I was thinking. Because um, we're, we're buying quite a bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if we all kind of pitch in on that. Well, again, let me reach out to her one more time. Yeah. It, these are all recorded, so yeah. it's easy enough mm -hmm. for, yep. for her yeah. to jump back on and. Do them all up. Yep. Bang them all out, and you know we're happy to pay. Right. So, so hopefully, we'll, at our next meeting, we'll have something to discuss for meeting minutes. So, uh, liaison next meeting. Li liaison mm -hmm. reports. Anyone? I have nothing. All right. Uh, there was no correspondence, so now speaking of our next meeting. <laughs> Um, we are scheduled to be here next week, uh, but no one is scheduled to be here with us, or... Uh, I can check. We can check about... We had a department so that was going to reschedule. DPW was going to reschedule. They were looking for like a like, later. Yeah, like, like, like a, a, a feeling of snow and ice. Yeah. Um, so and then South Shore Votech, we're not sure when they're coming in. Right. We can check. Um, so the next two weeks, we have sort of empty slates at the moment, but could potentially have someone pop on. Um, so would, would it make just me? Would it make and you, was, yeah. school. you, the school, South Shore Votech, <clears throat> and DPW? You don't. Matt, you don't happen to have a liaison list in front of you? Um, I think I believe it or not have a screenshot of it. I know, crazy, right? That would be awesome. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that I do. I was just thinking, and it might be actually be myself and Paul. Uh, so myself for the school, it was pretty beneficial. I do think Paul was because I, yeah. I, I know he had gone I think to the school right, yeah. meeting, mm -hmm. and we have their packets, right? Yeah, and it, it, it's on. I uploaded it to this, so oh, you can just okay. click on it. Yeah, I, all, all, all I was saying is that it was beneficial to meet with them prior to, to this meeting. Yeah. Um, so maybe the liaison team can do that. Yeah, Andrew and I met with them. Uh, we certainly would encourage it. I think I did, I did attach it to the, our spot on the website. That's how it works. That's right. We can. Not, we could probably upload it on this next yeah. time too. Maybe if we get the liaison, we can pop it up here for them. Yeah, I can do that. So my suggestion is just we take a look to see who is assigned the liaison and have them reach out to the school just to 
yep. kind of warm it up for that meeting because that's going to be an intense one. I think that's a good idea. Is there a social tech meeting? Mm -hmm. I think there is. There should be. Are the schools no longer doing their Saturday meeting at all? Um, we haven't done one with them in a while. I've never done a Saturday meeting. They used to be baked goods and coffee. Right. It was beneficial. Um, you can talk to Felicia about reviving that. Um, I mean, nobody wants to be there on a Saturday. However, um, I think when we had a lot of newer people, it was uh, beneficial for information purposes, not necessarily the you know, understanding their budget process and the information, mm -hmm. things about um, special education and, and things like that, that just we, you know, just coming on the board, you wouldn't really know or have information about or understand, kind of helps to put their, um, some of the, um, what do you call it, when th things that you're required to do. Um, Obligations. Uh, some of their obligations in perspective. Mandates. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Some of the mandates. Uh, we could always ask them for an earlier start, too, if we want. That doesn't... The Saturday meeting was something I think they did and just invited us. Oh. Like it was, it was mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to go and kind of. There was, a, there was definitely, I think, only one time since I've been on the committee that we had. A Saturday meeting like this meeting but on a Saturday morning with the schools and that one time it took it, it only took maybe two hours to do so it was deemed that it didn't need to be on a Saturday, Saturday anymore <laughs> Uh, that was a while ago so uh, South Shore of Otec, like again like I said they will be here tomorrow night to just discuss their, their school project. And they didn't put it out there, and I think I could probably ask him to do, you know, obviously an update of that anyways when they're here to do their budget. Um, they've also offered to come to the selectmen and do the same show, so there'll be other opportunities to see. But what I did see from their projections, depending on what they're considering for enrollment, the, the price to Abington alone is somewhere between 35 and 40 million dollars. Um, it's just us. Okay. For what? For just the enrollment? There's that many kids that go there? No, we only have about 50, but if they, they might base their enrollment on their project on an 800 person enrollment, or well, they might base it on a 900 person, which would mean a bigger building, so that would be more expensive. If they base it on 800 or whatever, their lower number is their current enrolled number, that'll mean less. But again, and they have three different schemes. They have two new construction schemes, and then I think there's one that has um, renovation and new construction. So that's what the, that, that project cost isn't quite narrowed down yet, but once they do figure out which number, what well, we doing the 800 enrollment or the 900 enrollment, and then are we doing plan A, B, or C, that's somewhere anywhere in that range of 35 to $40 million to the town of Abington right now. Um, are we doing getting Hingham involved in this? I don't know if you remember my comment from the year before. I don't know if Ingham's involved or not. It's not. No. They're not. I mean, they're, you know, Marshfield's in now. I mean. Oh, that's the time I was going to say when they were trying to pull another Marshfield town and it was in. Marshfield. Yeah. Okay. Because Hingham sends kids there. They just pay for it. From yeah, what a lot I remember. Of other towns that send vacant spots. We need to, yeah. can, we, can we cut that and tell them, hey, can't do it anymore. We you will be here very soon, and I think he would love to hear these recommendations from you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Matt, I am the secondary to Paul from the school, so I'll reach out. All right. And uh, Andrew, Thanks, Dan. so we're tentatively for February 28th? Yeah. Yep. Um, so back to the topic of next meetings. Um, if we don't have a department coming in, will there be any sort of um, state of where we're at 
as far as the overall budget and balancing that would be worth I would say by not next by next week, week, week but so maybe the seventh or articles by the seventh uh, we've got some articles but nothing really nothing that's going to generate you know cause any money problems um, governor's numbers you'll have probably I would wait two weeks yeah I'll probably have them next week but then Andrew and I got to figure out what to run through yeah them. what yeah um, so yeah probably the, by that so let's look for a meeting on the seventh. And we can do my budget and then whatever updates we have yep. on. So town manager, overall budget discussion, um, and possibly South Shore Votech if they can come that way. <laughs> Doesn't want to let you add it. <laughs> Fun with documents. I'll fix it later. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the we've got the general picture. Yes. Of <laughs> so. All right. Yes. Any um, any other discussion on upcoming meetings? Um, Just that I can't make the fourteenth. I think I the fourteenth and the twenty-first we're trying to leave off of the schedule. Okay. Um, because for obvious reasons on the 14th and then the 21st is school vacation week. So. Not obvious to everyone now. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, it was just Paul that left the community, right? It was still the yes. Residence. We have we have eight. Uh, so that actually brings up the question I had. Is quorum four for us now? Do we have eight? No. It's, it needs to be five. It's still be five because we have our nine-member board. I'm pretty sure it's still five. I can get some clarification on that, but I think, and there's no rule of necessity. Do you know if Sean's trying to? Unless I need it. Sean is, yeah, Sean, you know, it, it's, it's out there. I don't know whether he actually already had people that have reached out to him or not. His Rolodex. Binders for the people. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I will, and I'll ask him if he wants, I'll post it on the website too. Obviously, early with state numbers and stuff, but uh, progress towards balance. Well, we haven't really changed any numbers yet. We waited to get through this first round, and wait for that cherry sheet numbers, and um, and then we're, yeah, we'll take a a good look. I mean, it, it you know obviously chapter seventy is going to play a huge factor mm -hmm. in this, and I. Can't remember, but what was it? Six percent the school, four. But that doesn't. So oh, if we took the computers back out, it would be done. So, uh, so the school budget was going to go up by yeah six or seven percent. But in the governor's budget, I think chapter seventy went up by four percent. But that doesn't mean we're going to get just four percent. Right. Doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get four percent, right. or that we're going to get just four percent. Never, we really, yeah, and, and they, never they, really they, know. With it and and until, until you know, know, Peter and Felicia have a better handle on it. Um, I think they're pretty optimistic, but you know, again, who knows? And, and we'll get yeah. you know better sense from them. I I would expect to see those numbers by this time next week. But actually, plugging them in and then deciding where else we're going to make some them. changes. Mm -hmm. so. You know, I probably, I would hope by maybe on the 7th or the 28th, we'll have a pretty, you know, better handle on the capital plan too, or at least what the asks are. And then, you know, and then after that, it's just waiting for free cash. And once we know that, we can decide what to move on the capital plan. Okay. So we're getting there. I think we're in pretty what's good shape. Our, what's, the our, shape we're in. what's our timetable on free cash ballpark? Um, doesn't have to be February. end of February. Okay. And timetable on warrant articles. We got till the twelfth. Um, I think I have maybe it's less than a dozen right now. Um, the health department did give me a couple interest ones, interesting ones today. That maybe one of them will be our hook um, to. Ban the little baby nips. The nips. So they they proposing that 
Um, I don't think that they're particularly strong one way or the other, but I think there's enough people reaching out to them that they've decided to submit to sponsor the article. So that will be in there. Um, they have a second article. We have floodplain uh, FEMA maps to approve. And really no, nothing exciting there. What you really need is for someone to put a return fee on the NIPs. Nip because numbers. then the people won't throw them out their window that's if they think the they state. can get. I, I that's understand. Up to the state, eh? I understand. Mm -hmm. But that's what solve a lot of the problem. What does it take to uh, present an article? Uh, so if a, if a, a board or a committee or a uh, you know, department head wants to okay. put one forward, they just have to ask, and an then it'll go to the selectmen. If an individual wants to do a citizen's petition article, it need, they need 10 um, signatures. Is there a specific form? Yeah, it's online. It's, online. It, it's, uh, it, it's under citizen's petition. But yeah, I mean, it's a basic form. You know, kind of explain what the article is, the wording of it, and then you go and get, you know, 10 signatures legible with addresses of registered voters, and uh, depending on what it is. And submit it to who? Me. To you before the 12th? Yep. Pretty easy. It's coming. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Any other questions, motions? Ready to adjourn? Second. Motion to adjourn and a second. Any discussion? And any? All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. It is unanimous. We are adjourned.